These have to be some of the weirdest scams that people pull. Let's go ahead and start with number five. Who's your dentist? Crentist? Daniela Slabarin Gonzalez and Victor Bernal were arrested after practicing dentistry without a license in West Miami-Dade, Florida. While illegal dentistry practices aren't highly unusual, the nature of this duo scam was unique. The pair first operated their bogus business out of a blue and white bus that advertised the power of a healthy smile. Slabarin and Bernal wouldn't know exactly how one attains a healthy smile, let alone its power, as they had no formal dentistry training. Yet, the operation still attracted clientele who seemingly didn't have an issue with dentistry on a bus. We're sure it was totally safe. It's not like they were driving the bus while performing unlicensed root canals, which would be totally irresponsible. More recently, Slabarin and Bernal upgraded their operation to a red bus covered by an advertisement for a business called Matthew's Fun Show. But there was nothing fun about this sham. Mostly, children were victims of illegal treatment in the dental office on wheels. Nothing screams quality pediatric dentistry like a big red bus advertising a fun show. Slabarin and Bernal even had an operating website for their mobile dentistry where police were able to find details about the location of the operation and scheduled an appointment for a dental cleaning and a tooth extraction. When police arrived at Davco Storage and Propane, where the bus was parked, Bernal met them at the gate and drove them to the bus. Imagine being slightly nervous to get a tooth extraction, so you go to the address the dentist lists and it's storage and propane lot. Then the guy who's going to use dangerous tools inside your mouth meets you at a locked gate and leads you to the very back of the lot where no one can hear you scream for help to pull out your teeth from the inside of a bus. We'd be more worried we'd end up in an ice bath with our kidneys missing. It's like Bernal was wondering how he could make his operation as sketchy as he possibly could. At their appointment, police reported Slabarin as outfitted in a dental bib, protective face guard, and surgical latex gloves. As Slabarin diagnosed, evaluated, and offered to treat the officer, officials moved in and arrested the two. After the arrest, officers searched the bus and found bags containing various prescription drugs, including lidocaine, mepivicane, ibuprofen 600, and other dental products. Bernal was charged with possession with intent to sell, dispense, or deliver drugs with Without a prescription. Sounds like this pair were busted. Number four, I am Alison Krauss. Almost everyone has heard some sort of story about catfishing, but in this case of 53-year-old Peggy Sue Evers and 75-year-old Don Fulton, Evers never distorted or faked her appearance. Fulton had been lonely after his wife's death, was eager to find companionship through dating apps. Peggy Sue Evers, as Alison Krauss, met Don Fulton on such an app, claiming to be hiding in witness protection, which makes total sense for a famous person in witness protection to tell a stranger online. Poor Don. Evers was able to further convince Fulton that she was the famous country star and 27-time Grammy winner by singing a few tunes. There was absolutely no physical resemblance between country star Alison Krauss and scammer Peggy Sue Evers at all. But the few songs Evers sang to Fulton, along with being deeply lonely, seemed to be enough to convince him. Shortly after they met on the dating app, Evers and Fulton were married, which raises questions as to how Fulton was still fooled at this point. Not long after their marriage, Evers began to drain Fulton's life savings. She also convinced Fulton to sign over the deed to his house and filed a will for him, leaving all his assets to herself as naming her children as his heirs. Evers essentially took everything that Don Fulton had acquired over the course of his 75 years because she's an awful human being, as are all scammers, and she would have continued to do so had the bank not become suspicious. First Security Bank reported a welfare concern to police, saying that Fulton was in poor health and there was reason for concern that he was being taken advantage of. Fulton's bank account went from $45,000 to $5,000 after marrying Evers. Fulton also mentioned signing the deed to his house over, but he didn't know it was put in Evers' name. He thought he was signing it over to his son. Evers was arrested and pleaded guilty to theft by deception and was sentenced to eight years of probation, ordered to pay $73,000 in restitution, return four cars to Fulton, and sign his home back over to him. Despite her deception of a lonesome, overly trusting man, Evers wasn't to receive any jail time. That's until she failed to return Fulton's vehicles within 60 days of her guilty plea. 
Illinois. Evers then failed to appear in court and was rearrested at a motel where she was registered under a false name. She was given an additional 257 days in jail and 15 years probation. Maybe Ma Gorg will return to the trash heap from whence she came to live with the other Gorgs. Number three, scammed at first sight. Michelle Karen first put her name on the map during her appearance on Married at First Sight, a popular dating show. The show is less about dating and more of an immediate marriage to a stranger, harkening back to a simpler time when you didn't have to bother actually knowing someone and could just make a significant commitment based on appearance. You know, like the way the Founding Fathers intended. Michelle's Married at First Sight romance shockingly didn't work out, and afterwards, she returned to her full-time job in policy training. She lost her policy training job after refusing to comply with vaccine mandates and then began to make content for OnlyFans, an adult content website, also the way the Founding Fathers intended. We're looking at you, Mr. Franklin. Sinner. After seeing initial success on OnlyFans, Michelle read an article that claimed several prominent Australian celebrities, including a notable TV host, had endorsed an online brokerage company. She decided to get in on the allegedly golden investment opportunity and began to put her money into it. A lot of her money. But Michelle became suspicious after a few months passed without any of the promised financial returns. As her suspicion grew, Michelle started contacting the brokerage company to ask about her payments. Instead of payments, they sent a handsome financial broker named Charles. Charles played into Michelle's longing for love and would send her flowers, chocolates, and words of affirmation promising that he would fly her out to London so they could be together. The con man even promised her a pony in every color, which is very misleading because unless we're talking about patterns, isn't there only about four colors? Five? There's not a lot of colors is what we're saying. This isn't a My Little Pony situation where Charles is going to be buying her 100 ponies. Michelle became more and more enamored with Charles, although she was suspicious of his accent that sounded more South African but she looked past it for love. At the same time Charles was wooing her, the online brokerage firm created fake stocks that made it appear as if Michelle was earning thousands of dollars through her investments. In reality, the brokerage was stealing all her money. The scam fell apart when Michelle had to make an emergency hospital trip following a severe case of pancreatitis. She attempted to withdraw $5,000 to cover her medical bills and her withdrawal was denied. Up to that point, she believed that she had over $180,000 in her bank account. Michelle called Charles, who told her there was an investigation going on at the brokerage and he was unable to access her funds at the time, keeping her on the hook just a little bit longer. Eventually, she put her foot down and insisted that she was leaving the brokerage firm. She was told that the only way she'd get her money back was to put down another $12,000. Michelle truly began to feel the weight of her suspicions and went to the brokerage website to leave negative reviews, which were immediately taken down, increasing her suspicion. At this point, the scammers had also infiltrated Michelle's personal devices after she gave them access via a remote desktop application called AnyDesk. She learned she had been hacked after logging onto her computer to find a website open with a basket full of purchases she had never made. Michelle will never get back the money she lost, but she said that the worst part was being fooled with another failed romance. She said she missed her chats with Charles and was left both broke and brokenhearted. Number two, inmates with benefits. California resident Brandy Iglesias used the names of notorious convicted murderers to collect unemployment benefits, racking up more than $145,000. She also filed for unemployment benefits under her own name, despite being fully employed. Iglesias was employed at a private company that contracted with San Quentin State Prison, where she learned of and stole the identities of killers Scott Peterson and Casey Stainer. Scott Peterson was, well, you probably know the Scott Peterson story. Casey Stainer was convicted after confessing to the murder of four women in Yosemite National Park in 1999. Stainer is still on death row, allowing Iglesias the opportunity to capitalize upon his unemployment benefits. Through her job, Iglesias was able to attain the private information of the convicted criminals and move forward with her scam. Iglesias claimed $18,562 under Peterson's name and $20,194 under Stainer's name. The rest of her fraudulent earnings were gained from her own unemployment benefits amongst others. Iglesias joined her convict aliases behind bars on October 26, 2022 on 10 charges of grand theft, forgery, identity theft, and making false statements. While most may think that taking the unemployment money of individuals who have committed terrible crimes isn't the worst thing you can do, Iglesias preyed upon a system that aided those heavily impacted by the pandemic. During the pandemic, California, amongst other states, faced unprecedented fraud attempts, and most of the schemes were linked to the emergency federal 
Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, a program put in place to ameliorate the financial devastation of pandemic job loss was soiled by crimes committed by those like Iglesias. Such thefts harm families in need, parents left jobless during the pandemic, and people who just struggle to get by. Number one, art becomes con. British native Larissa Watson was a creative director at an interior design firm and had enjoyed a successful art career. Her position in the art world left her known as a refined, upper-class lady with an esteemed reputation. Then, one dreary British day, Watson just up and left. Her family members reported her missing while Watson was on the way to Italy, where she would begin a four-month crime spree throughout the country, culminating in her attempting to steal a 130,000-pound luxury yacht. Watson posted her Italian travels to social media, enjoying lavish dinners, spa treatments, and hotels without payment. She posted a message on Facebook on Mother's Day saying that she was missing her four children while she was enjoying luxury dinners. She frequently updated her socials, detailing her new lavish lifestyle, and she created one unique post saying that she had been kicked out of a party in Bologna. Watson was first arrested for sneaking into a hotel room and attempting to flee. After her arrest, Watson told the British Embassy that she didn't want to go home and hoped her family and friends would come to Italy. Next, Watson headed to the spa where she ordered a beauty treatment. She was arrested again and cautioned for not paying the bill. When she was arrested, she had no money or form of identification and appeared to have been living out of her backpack. Despite the likelihood that Watson had been sleeping and living in rough conditions, she was left feeling fresh and rejuvenated after her visit to the spa. All that running out on bills can really take a toll. Watson was ultimately let go by police and continued her crime spree with her next crime being the biggest. Watson attempted to steal a 100 130,000 pound yacht from a high class Portofino resort on the Italian Riviera. To be fair, the keys were on board the yacht, which is like practically asking someone to come steal your yacht. All Watson had to do was start the engine and sail away like sticks. But before Captain Larissa Sparrow could make her grand escape, an employee was able to leap from the dock on board the boat. He grabbed the keys from Watson and turned the yacht back to port. Watson picked up a grand theft charge for his crime and the nickname the Portofino Pirate. Authorities searched through Watson's social media and discovered that she had undertaken navigation courses, so she was familiar with boat handling and that her boat heist was planned. Since Watson's string of crimes and arrests, she was released on bond and her whereabouts are unknown. If she doesn't appear in court for her fraud charges, she will receive an international warrant for her arrest and could face up to three years in jail. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section, what's the weirdest scam you've seen someone try in real life?